If you want to get rid of your back pain quickly and permanently, then you're in the right place. I am Roland Liebscher-Bracht and today we are doing a 30-minute routine that is massively effective against back pain. Let yourself be surprised and make it a routine. Repeat it over and over again. We've developed a motivation calendar which you can print out for free and which will really get you back on track and allow you to get rid of these back pains. We will start right away with the most important exercise that counteract the negative effects of sitting. Please find a wall, position your elbows against the wall, shoulder width apart, push your hips forward and make sure your stomach is pulled in as much as possible. that your navel is pulled towards the lumbar spine and then you notice the stretch directly in the hip, in the groin, maybe it pulls into the back, really nice, always further in there. Breathe nicely and increase the stretch always with the exhale and make sure to relax the front but pull in the belly button. It's not quite easy, but very efficient. Because then you are getting to the root of most lower back pain. Always push the groins further forward. Push yourself away from the wall. As the arch becomes more pronounced, Pull your chin back, which will also engage your thoracic spine. As far as it can go, extend it fully and eventually tilt your head back to increase the stretch. Breathe into it more and more, but stay just below the point where it becomes too intense and it should feel challenging but manageable. Then, using the strength of your core, push your hips forward as if trying to push the wall away upward. Hold that position, deepen the stretch a bit more and then slowly come back up. Move around a little to loosen up. and go directly towards a chair or a table so that you have a bit of counterforce that you can support and now you go deeper and try to include the lower back, the lower part in the stretch. This is essentially the counter movement. Bend your knees slightly so that the pulling sensation in the back of your knees doesn't prevent you from bending forward further. Bend them just enough so that your knees no longer feel any stretch. Because we don't want the stretch in the knees right now, we want it in the lower back. Feel free to support yourself and continue lowering down. You should really feel the stretch in your lower back. Keep easing into it and let gravity help you deepen the stretch. And keep working your way further out so that movement occurs in the lower lumbar spine area because that's where the response to the shortened front muscles is located. because the muscles have to counteract there in order to balance the pull from the front. And that's why most people have such a hard tension back there, where the masseur always says, Wow, full contraction, no movement at all, everything is completely stiff. Now we're going to work on it, gradually loosening it up more and more. Then, reach behind your legs and focus exactly on that area.
where your back is being stretched, use that area to build strength to lift your torso up. A little more and a little more, then release and go even deeper into the stretch again. You can also pull yourself further down by holding your foot, trying to go a bit deeper each time. Then, slowly come back up. Ok, now we'll move on to twisting. Stand with the outside of your right foot against the wall. Stand slightly wider than shoulder width apart so you have a stable stance and reach with the left hand to the wall and with the right hand as well and pull yourself further to the right and now the intervertebral discs cheer because we are squeezing them completely. You can imagine this like a sponge that is full of dirty water and now we squeeze it or press it so that the dirty water can come out. And when we return to the starting position later, the area will absorb fresh nutrients from the surrounding fluid and the waste can be carried away. We don't need that. So this is the cleansing of the intervertebral discs, which we are doing right now. Keep turning, keep turning, and you can actively turn your head as well. And you can also gauge the progress by how much your head turns as your field of view widens. Keep going further and now try to tense the muscles. The rotational muscles of your torso should try to turn you to the left. But since we're holding ourselves steady, it remains just an attempt without causing any actual movement. but it triggers a lot of great effects. The tension knots are removed from the corresponding muscles and afterwards, when you release and relax again. You can continue with the stretching and then we come back very slowly and you imagine how your intervertebral discs are absorbing nutrients. And then we go to the other side. and do exactly the same, but on the other side. Now the right hand reaches for the wall and the entire torso is pulled to the left. Take a moment, imagine how your intervertebral discs are compressed over their entire surface, all the dirt is pushed out, then it spreads in this surrounding fluid. And hopefully, your metabolism is efficient enough to clear it away before we move forward again later. So that the dirt is removed and not sucked back in. And keep turning, keep turning and observe that you can now look a little further to the left over your shoulder. Use your breath beautifully. Deep inhalation is good and deep exhalation will take you further into the stretch. Because exhaling reduces muscle tension, this goes through the brain and allows you to go further into the stretch, especially during exhalation. Keep working your way deeper. And no matter how you stand or how you lean against the wall, it doesn't matter. Just do it as well as you can and it will get better each time. We are not doing a beauty contest or gracefulness competition, but we simply want to make our body our back pain free. The appearance doesn't matter. Keep turning a little further and now the entire torso tightens 
as if it wanted to turn to the right. But it can't, because we are holding it tight and trying even more and trying even more and even more and then letting go again and going further into the stretch and slowly coming out again. Now the intervertebral discs are filling up again. Imagine that, that was the feast. Twice for the intervertebral discs. Okay. Now we need the stretching strap and preferably something to hold on to so you can use a chair. And now we position ourselves in such a way that we ideally make the strap a bit larger. You can also hold a belt or use a towel. Yes, that's all possible. Step practically with the right foot. Step into the loop with the right foot. Now pass the loop between the legs into the left hand. And you basically pull your right foot to the left so that you are now standing crossed over. Maybe take a step a little bigger so that it can be seen nicely. Now push your pelvis to the right and you'll feel the stretch on the right side of your pelvis. Keep going until you notice the stretch. So, if you can't do it, stay steady and firm. If you can manage it balance-wise, then extend your arm over your head. And you're pulling further to the left. Now you'll feel the stretch moving higher than just the right side of your pelvis the more you pull your right arm to the left. The more the stretching also goes into the right side of the body, because we want to make the whole back pain-free. From below, from the cruciate ligament, up to where the cervical spine begins, where the neck then starts, keep pulling further over, nice, keep pulling further over, and then tighten up. And with your right side, where you feel the stretch, engage those muscles as if you're trying to pull yourself up, but it won't actually move. because the strap prevents that. And your arm, which holds the loop and tightens properly and takes the force out, relax and pull yourself a little further. And a little further and carefully go out again, come out carefully, always move slowly after these stretches. Now you step into the stretching strap with your left foot or into the towel which you must hold with both hands or tie a knot at one end or with your belt. And then you reach between the legs, take the strap in your right hand, stand cross-legged. If you don't have it, it's not a big investment and it lasts 50 years. You should get it because it's simply super helpful for performing exercises better and more efficiently. And to make it easier. And now you push your pelvis out to the left, pushing further out to the left. Now you feel the stretch again here. And then up here and now pull the left arm further to the right. And now you will notice now the stretching goes higher, further and a little further, but only do that with the left arm, as I said, if you don't sway so much and if you can maintain good balance. Keep going further to the right, go a little further to the right, and you will notice that the tissue gives way a little, so it continues a little further, and that is the job we must do as long as we live, let the muscles stretch and get longer again. If you only do this routine daily at first, and after one, two weeks, maybe four times a week, then eventually three times a week, and eventually two times a week, but you must not do less, because otherwise everything builds up again, 
because that's how we live, because we sit too much and don't balance it out. Overall, movement is increasingly restricted and it gets worse as we become more digital. While that's great in some ways, it has its downsides. Keep pulling and then engage by tensing your left side as if you're trying to lift yourself up. Hold on tight, tighten up, tighten up even more, then relax and continue to stretch further. Come out of the exercise slowly. Slowly come out of the stretch. Do a little belly dance if you can, though I can't do it myself. And now move towards the corner, heading in that direction. Or find a door frame, that works too. Stretch your arms fully and position them slightly above horizontal. Place one foot in. One step back with your foot and as you move forward you'll feel the stretch in your hand as it moves over the wall. Mikey, please focus exactly on my right hand. If that works, or on the left hand, it doesn't really matter. Now take a close look at what you see. I'm bending my fingers, lifting the palm away from the wall, and then straightening the fingers again. I come more towards the corner and extend my elbow again, the left and the right, and I am further in, okay, and you do that every time. When you notice you could stretch further, but you're stuck to the wall, then you bend your fingers, lift yourself away, and go further in. And extend your elbow again, because the elbow must always be fully extended, and I will do it again now, just like before, and further in. And again and further in, yes, and you notice, it pulls in the chest, it pulls in the shoulder joint, it pulls the upper arm, the upper arms down to the elbows. Keep moving forward and now press with both hands, but fully extended elbows, as hard against the walls as you can. I'll help you and join in. A little more, and a little more, and a little more, and a little more. And release again, relax, go further in and slowly go out again and feel inside. Isn't it wonderful? I love how everything flows after this exercise. Now we'll take it up a notch. Position your arms again, but this time not just a little higher. Instead, go a bit higher, aiming for about 30 degrees, which is one third of 90 degrees, like one-third of the edge of a square coaster, then move into the stretch again. Now we're targeting different fibers. You'll notice it stretches differently this time. Let's do the same thing. Lift the palm away with your fingers and go further into the stretch. Until the elbows are extended and you are only allowed to go as far with the hand as you can actually keep the arms extended. You need the stretch because of the biceps, as this is primarily a bicep stretch for most people. It's not just a chest stretch that's also involved, but for most people it's primarily a bicep stretch. It's essentially a pure elbow flexor exercise. because there is also a lot to do with the positioning of the shoulder, which in turn has to do with the pain in the thoracic spine. Keep going deeper and maybe adjust your grip, going a bit further each time. Gradually increase the stretch as you feel the tissues giving way and the stretch diminishing. Use small adjustments with your fingertips and palm and stretch your arms out again going a little further each time. 
make sure you're focusing on the upper part of your chest, specifically the top of the sternum rather than your pelvis, as the latter won't be effective. You must press firmly with the upper end of the sternum. It must always go further into the corner. And then we press here again really firmly. And come on, join in, press harder. Elbow extended and even tighter and even tighter and even tighter. Let go. Relax again. Go a little further in. And then we come out of the corner. Do you notice what's happening even after just one session? Imagine doing this regularly. It's important to practice consistently. Now I'm just moving around a bit. And now we continue on the mat, cotton or carpet, doesn't matter. Get onto the crawling position, move your hands a bit further forward, palms facing, slightly outward. And now let yourself hang down. Let yourself hang down with the groin first. Okay, and take out the right knee. Take out the right knee and let yourself hang down with the pelvis. Now you will notice. This pulls slightly differently, this pulls slightly differently, and that's good because this exercise complements the exercise on the wall with the overstretching. Now we focus more on a different part of the hip flexor. And as a pleasant side effect, pull the legs to the right, including the adductors, which are also too short in most people, and are usually so short that this also pulls the hip flexor sideways. But you don't have to understand that so well. I'm just saying that for those who are more familiar with the anatomy of movement, really let it sink in nicely. Let it sink in properly and then we press with the left knee firmly against the ground. Press really firmly against the ground, even firmer, even firmer. Let go again, let it hang in deeper. Breathe deeply and comfortably, then we'll switch sides. Now my right leg is extended and my left leg is bent. I'm letting my right hip sink down nicely. And remember, flowers always belong in water. That has nothing to do with the training, but Thomas knows what to do. Let the left leg sink down nicely away from the body to the side. Really let it hang down nicely and you will notice. Now it mainly pulls in the right groin and that's good, that's good because it's about the hip flexor again and that's the muscle we need to control. So that we are truly spared from back pain and what is always shocking or rather striking one must say, shocking is negative, striking has a positive connotation. Even if you have herniated discs and other unpleasant things of this kind or sacroiliac joint or facet joint inflammation, you can alleviate your pain with these same exercises. Just as easily get rid of it as if you didn't have it, which is because these injuries, unlike what many, many people think, also doctors and therapists, unfortunately, have nothing to do with the pain. In most cases, there are exceptions as always, but in most cases, let it sink nice and deep, let it sink even deeper, and then we tighten it.
the right knee against the ground, tighten, tighten, even tighter, even tighter, and then release the tension and go a little further in. And slowly come out of the stretch. Take your time to adjust. Be careful, especially if you haven't done this for a long time. Do it very gently. Maybe start by grabbing the knees now, along the legs, stretch in the other direction, pull forward bit by bit, and now again like before while standing as well. Now let's go back to these tensions, to these cramps you have to say, which are so brutally present in the back of most people. Many people with back pain also say. I feel like I'm wearing a corset, as if I'm strapped into a suit of armor, with a board attached to my back, as if I'm welded together. This sensation is caused by muscles that are so tight, they're pulling strongly. These are like titanium plates that stiffen the vertebrae, which can eventually crack and tear due to fatigue. Titanium. Just think about what it normally withstands. These are the massive muscular forces at play, pulling more and more forward and then really pulling back. Now pull back with your back as if it wanted to go backwards, upwards. Make an effort. Pull. Not jerky, but always a little firmer. Pull nicely and we will bring the tension out a whole lot more. Pull a little more, you will soon feel what happens, and pull a little more and a little more and let go. Look at how you're moving forward, how it's yielding nicely. We love that because movement needs to happen back there. It's essential for circulation and metabolic activity. Everything needs to be thoroughly flushed and renewed. Then we slowly go out and now we do something particularly fun and beautiful because now we let gravity do the exercise. What do I mean by that? We are now going into the supine position and you either take books or our back hero, placing it under the sacrum and then you straighten your legs. First, keep your body straight, stretch your legs, and let yourself fully extend. That's the exercise. I'd recommend doing it every evening. Especially if you feel back pain at night, try lying on a back hero or on books stacked accordingly, preferably paperbacks, which are a bit soft. Or you can put a pot holder over it, then it works quite well, because that way you eliminate the possibility of getting back pain, which is almost no longer possible after the exercise. You'll sleep like a baby, but avoid sleeping on your side with your knees pulled up, ideally. Worst case, try not to sleep in a curled up position. If you notice that the stretch has eased, then gradually move further into the stretch, spreading your legs apart. You'll notice the stretch intensifies again. How beautiful is that? Gravity does the work. Yes, you can watch TV, you can read, you can listen to music, talk or read. Yes, no extra time. 
but an effect that would blow you away, that would totally inspire you, yes. And go a bit further, spreading your legs apart as the stretch eases. You can stay in this position for 10-15 minutes if you like. Just be very cautious when getting up afterward as your body will need time to adjust to the increased stretch. Okay, then you slowly come back down. Wow! By the way, back saver, click here and then you will get the right information about it and can read up on what it is about. And until it is delivered, just use books. If you regularly practice what we've done for your back, the complete freedom and sense of well-being you'll experience, then you'll want to achieve that feeling for your whole body. Make sure to check out our channel to get the full experience. At least try it out. Please, please, please try it out. Goodbye.